Hey guys, there's a lot of cool things happening in the garden right now. I've been gone for the last few days just because I was sick and I'm feeling a lot better now. Today we actually stopped by a nursery and picked up a new baby. This week there's been two new additions to the garden which I'm really excited to show you. And I'm gonna walk you through what I'm doing right now, which is planting a new tree. What else is new? I feel like I'm always planting a tree. This is the first one. This is a variegated pink Eureka lemon and it looks beautiful. I planted it a few days ago. The video for it should be up by now. It's in a 25 gallon pot and it's right next to Kiki the dwarf Cavendish banana which you can see right there. Kiki's been through a lot and it's finally starting to push out some beautiful new growth. We haven't hit our last frost yet so I'm still keeping an eye on it but for the most part it's looking great. What happened with this banana is that it actually fell over during a storm a few months ago and everything fell out the roots the soil a lot of the roots were torn off but as you can see it's a little fighter and i can't wait to see it push out pups this is going to be a dwarf variety so it's perfect for containers it doesn't get that big but it produces some really nice fruit they are cavendish bananas so they'll have the taste of the ones that we find at the store which is pretty cool i also have a goldfinger and a manzano banana so i have a few flavor profiles to work with back to the Eureka lemon. Look how beautiful it is. The leaves are variegated and the fruit is also going to be variegated. As it's ripening, it's going to be striped with yellow and green, but when you cut it up on the inside, it's going to be pink like a grapefruit. So it's gonna be really beautiful. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look. I don't think it has any blooms right now. I mean, it does have some new growth and the new growth looks really pretty. Actually, yeah, I see right there it looks like it's gonna try and bloom i heard that the blooms are pink which is really beautiful i'm not gonna let it bloom this year though because when i potted it up i realized that it didn't have that big of a root system and for the most part i like to hold off for the first year let the trees rest and really establish roots and then the second year is when i let them fruit sometimes it can be under a year but for the most part i want them to have at least an entire spring and summer to set down roots this is what it looks like it's really tall the trunk is very thin as you can see here so it's not a super mature tree it's still very young so even if i did litter fruit i wouldn't be surprised if it dropped the fruit because it's still it's still trying to mature but this is the new addition da -da -da -da! excuse the mess behind it please i need to clean up the yard again but this is a pakistan mulberry tree i picked it up today from what is it called Green Life, Seamus O'Leary's Tropical Nursery. They have a great selection of a ton of fruit trees. And I had a store credit, so I picked this up for a whopping $35, which is not bad at all. It was originally $65. And, and let me show you the condition that it's in. First of all, it's breaking dormancy, as you can see there. We have a lot of buds starting to break through, a lot of leaves starting to leaf out and it looks gorgeous i like how straight this trunk is they had a lot of them in stock right now i think they were recently unloading stuff because it looked like they had a lot of pots to place out on the floor i was very excited for this one because it already has a nice shape going on it has this main trunk right here it has two more branches which i might go ahead and prune off i'm not entirely sure yet i might leave them on and Kind of train it to have three trunks although i will say that these trees are very vigorous growers and i can train it to grow like a shrub or a tree i prefer a tree form most likely i'll go with one trunk though and what i can do with these is just propagate them so i might go ahead and do that but first i need to pot it up so what's so special about trying to grow a mulberry tree in a 25 gallon pot is that you don't see that very often because these trees are so vigorous and they grow a good six to ten feet in a year sometimes even more than that especially when they're extra happy in the location they're in which means that they might need to be up potted often or if you're growing them in a smaller pot like this one you might need to root prune probably every year a three gallon pot would not be sufficient for this type of tree i would assume which is why I'm going with a 25 gallon in the hopes of having to root prune maybe every two to three years because I wanna keep it nice and compact so it doesn't get out of control. With that said, a lot of people also recommend growing it in pots because of the fact that it's very vigorous. So if you have a pool or you don't want the roots going into any sort of water pipes or stuff like that, you might consider growing it in a pot just to try and restrain its size. 
But again, it depends because it will be a lot of upkeep simply because these trees are very biggers. Which brings me to why I purchased a mulberry tree in the first place. Well, I really wanted one for the longest time. I didn't get one because I was just far too scared. I know how big they can get. When I was a kid, we had three, was it three or four mulberry trees? But I think they were the dwarf ever varying variety. They weren't my favorite just because they weren't as sweet. One of them was a white variety, but the berries were still very small and it was very underwhelming. I felt like the berries were bland. Um, the red ones tasted a lot better and I've heard a lot of great things about the Pakistan variety. There's a white Pakistan variety as well. This one's the red and I've heard that the green ones or the white ones are the sweetest there is. Someone compared them to a honeydew taste. These have a little bit more of that berry taste, a little bit more acidity, but they're still really sweet and they're red, which means that they can stain very easily. I'm going to have it here on top of the turf. So even if any berries fall down, I can easily clean it and then wash it off. But I don't want it anywhere near the pavers because I know it's going to stain them and I probably won't be able to get that off. So anyways, I've been babbling for a long time. <laughs> Let me show you what I've been doing right now. And that's mixing up some soil. What else is new? I'm actually done mixing this one up. It's ready to go and it took forever, which is why I didn't film it. But I wanted to bring you guys along for the up potting process. Also, before I do that, I wanted to show you the iceberg roses. So my plan a few weeks ago, oh, actually even up to a few days ago, was to transplant these iceberg roses into 15 gallon pots and then keep them there simply because I don't think they've outgrown this pot, but they kept falling over whenever we had really strong winds. And then I realized that all I really had to do was prune it back. The roses had a lot of crossing branches. They had a lot of foliage at the bottom that was starting to yellow a bit. And I needed to give them a nice pruning before spring really hits. That way they can go ahead and fill out nicely and they're not going to be kind of scraggly and all over the place. So right now they look kind of bald. And then this pot is going to be replaced with a 25 gallon pot because I want to place my hog plume right there. That one is still inside the grow tent. It's looking great. It's actually trying to fruit. It's not going to because the flowers aren't being pollinated and it still needs to be up potted, but it's already trying to do its thing. So I think it's going to be perfect right here because it's going to be nice and compact. And I also moved my pineapple guava over here. So today I figured out what variety this is. It's a Coolidge variety, which I believe is a self pollinating pineapple guava. So when it comes to pineapple guavas, most of the time they recommend two varieties because they need cross pollination in order to set adequate amount of fruit. Some might not even fruit for years if they're either an ornamental variety or if they don't have another variety to cross pollinate with. But I finally realized that this one is a Coolidge, which I'm very happy about because I was worried for a second there that I might need to buy a second one because the tree itself is gorgeous, but but I've never tried the fruit before, so I didn't want to buy a second variety just to find out that I don't like the taste. I think right here is going to be a lot happier because it's going to get some morning sun, afternoon shade, and I've heard that that's what pineapple guava is like here in the desert. Otherwise, it gets too hot for them. And this one has been doing pretty good so far. Even in the prior location where it got a lot more full sun, it was doing pretty good, but maybe that's why it didn't set fruit last year in addition to the fact that it was still really young. So I really have my hopes for fruit this year because I want to try it and I want my kids to try it most of all, but we'll have to see. I'm going to start off with some azomite and I'm going to work it into the top few inches of soil and then I'm going to add some fresh worm castings. brought you in closer because I felt like you were too far. I'm going to add in one more scoop of worm castings. There we go. And then I'm going to plop my tree right here. I know it seems like it's a little bit tall, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure, well actually, with how vigorous these trees are, I'll have to look at the roots. But if I need to make the hole a little bit deeper, I will. I just don't like to plant my trees too deep. So let's take off the steak. Now let's take a look. Uh, there we go. Yeah, see, look at these roots right here, you guys. This tree has 
beautiful roots going on, which is very nice. I feel like oftentimes most of the pots I buy are full of soil and not so much roots. So I'm gonna look for the root flare now, digging down a little bit deeper. The reason I like to look for the root flare is because I wanna make sure that these trees can breathe. If they're already planted deep in their nursery pot and then I plant them deeper in this pot, then over time as the soil settles and I add amendments on top and mulch, the trees can't get as much oxygen as they'd like. And I've noticed that they thrive so much more when I have them planted at the proper height. So now, before I plant anything, I always check for that root flare. Aside from that, it helps me see girdling roots better. If any ever start to develop, I can see them right away versus if it's covered with a few inches of soil, they can be girdling the tree underneath and you will never know. And by girdling, I mean strangling the tree. Oh, and here we go. Here's a root flare down here. So it's a couple inches down. So what I do is I break up the soil, remove it from the top. You can see a lot of these feeder roots coming out but the root flare is what I'm after. Which you'll notice as the bottom of the tree starts to get a little bit wider and then you'll start to see some of those really nice anchoring roots coming out. There we go, you can start to see the root flare down here. So that's the height that I'll be planted it, planting it at, is right here. So it was buried about this much deeper. And as you can see, now it doesn't look like it's too tall for the pot. I can actually probably add another two shovelfuls. Maybe like right there I'm gonna make room and I'm gonna amend it one more time here we go azomite's just gonna give it some nice trace minerals so that the tree is super happy in here and as you can see it's a few inches above the level of the pot but that's fine I mound it up and over the next year you're gonna start to see it settle down the roots on this tree are very vigorous, so honestly, I don't think I need to add mycorrhizae, but because I do it for every other tree, I'm gonna do it for this one as well, just to help it become established a bit faster, and then also into the hole. Mycorrhizae goes a very long way. I always love to use it whenever I'm planting new trees or new shrubs because it's very beneficial. It creates a symbiotic relationship with the roots of your trees. It helps it draw nutrients. I don't know if you guys have read any pieces or articles on how trees communicate through their mycorrhizal network. It's just gonna make the tree really happy, okay? Mycorrhizae, it's like the tree's best friend. And all you're doing is introducing them to each other and they'll take care of the rest. And before I start backfilling with that soil, I'm gonna sprinkle some more worm castings on there. And then I'm going to backfill. But yeah, this is the only tree that probably wouldn't need mycorrhizae for root establishment. But I can't leave this one out, you know? I have to treat it the same way I treat my other trees. Even if this one is an overachiever. Next, I'm going to mulch this little guy. Normally, I like to use some hardwood mulch. But in this case, I'm going to use a mixture of hardwood mulch, straw, leaves in the following years i hope to be able to mulch with nothing but hollow leaves from all of the potted trees in my orchard because as they break down they'll continue to feed the tree and it'll be a lot more cost effective than having to buy the bags of hardwood mulch really all you want to do is protect that soil and give it a little bit of insulation so it doesn't dry out quite as fast okay i think that should be good enough and then i'm going to move it over to its place so heavy. The tree is finally in its new location. Whew. So next I'm gonna work on attaching the drip. The good thing is that it's already set up. I just need to place it around like so. Oh, some sunflowers. Okay, so the drip line that I use is from Drip Depot. It has emitters every six inches. They also sell some that have it every 12 inches. I personally really like the six inch spacing, but I think the 12 would also work pretty well. Now this little tree is ready to go. My irrigation is timed 
and automated to go off every four days right now because it's still really nice and cool. Some days we go up to the low 80s, other days we dip down to the 70s and in the past like two or three days it's dipped down into the 60s. So I'm gonna leave it for every four days and what I'm gonna do instead is water it in by hand. That way it gets a nice drink of water and afterwards it'll just get watered every time the rest of the orchard gets watered. Let's go ahead and do that now. This one is so cute. Makes me so happy. Look how pretty that looks. It's watered in. I made sure the water drain out the bottom and I think it's ready to go. If I do decide to prune off some of those branches to propagate, I'll let you guys know. But right now, I think I'm gonna leave it alone. After I was done with that, I took some more soil and I filled up the pot for my hog plum, which is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it off to the side. I'm not transplanting the hog plum until the end of this month, probably even the first week of March, just to make sure that it doesn't get hit with a light frost because the nursery recommended to keep it inside until it's well above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so far it's been going up to the low 50s and then dropping back down to the high 30s, low 40s. So I just wanna make sure that my tree is okay before I bring it out here. As for the rest of this potting mix, I can go ahead and fill up another 15 gallon pot. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up some of my tomato plants or the pots that I have my tomato plants in. Let me show you. Over here, as you can see, this tomato has really taken off. It looks beautiful, but the pot is filled up a little bit more than halfway. And what I wanna do right now is take off these little suckers right here, just like that, like this, and like this. There you go. And maybe even this one actually. This variety is, let's see here, a yellow pear tomato and it's been doing great but I feel like it needs more soil so I'm going to top it off and I'm going to go through and look at the other ones to see if I can fill up any of these a bit more. There was one right here that was struggling and unfortunately it didn't make it which is fine. I think this one had three tomato seedlings in it and two of them did good. One of them is gone. Can't always win every single one. The rest of these look pretty good so far though. So let's go ahead and grab this guy. Let's go through and check these. Most of them look really good. Oh, look at this one. This one looks beautiful. What variety is this? Can't even see the tag anymore. Oh, right here. This is a Roma. Oh, this Roma is really nice. It's probably about a foot tall right now. There was one that didn't have a tag on it and I'm pretty sure it was a Berry's Crazy Cherry. And this one needs to be thinned out because there's two of them in here. Oh no, what variety is this? San Marzano. Why do I do that, you guys? I don't thin them out, I say I will later and then I feel even worse doing it at this point because they just grow so well. Oh, I don't need two of them though. So one of them is gonna have to go. Let's see, please tell me this one only has one. It does. This one should be a Berry's Crazy Cherry. Yep. Berry, oh no wait, it's a Baxter's Bush Cherry. So that's what the other one is as well. Because I remember separating them and then forgetting to make a second tag. This one looks pretty good so far. Hmm. This one needs to be thinned out. I feel so bad. It must be done. There you go. I could also go ahead and pop this in water, propagate it, and plant it somewhere else, but honestly, I have like 15 tomato plants right now. I don't need another. I might still do it though, just because I feel bad. And then with other varieties like this one, I'm gonna pinch off all of these bottom shoots because whenever I water it, I don't want the water to be splashing up onto there because then that can cause diseases. And while I'm already out here breaking my heart, I'm gonna go ahead and thin out these eggplants as well. I'm pretty sure this is the Black Beauty variety. Yep, Black Beauty eggplant. By the way, look at all these hummingbirds. The evenings are their favorite time to come to the garden 
I think because it's nice and cool. And then early in the morning too, when I come out here to grab things for lunch, I always see them buzzing around. Okay, here I have two pepper plants and these are jalapenos and they're looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna keep this one though. There you go. For this tomato, all I'm gonna do is fill up the rest of the pot with some more soil. Just like that because I want this stem to be able to develop some more roots. And then I'm gonna add some mulch on top. That looks so much better. The mulch is also gonna help to insulate the little tomato plant, but also whenever I water, the water can't splash up from the soil and hit the leaves. And that's basically it. I watered it this morning, so I might give it another soaking, but it's basically ready to go now. And it looks like the sun is already going down behind the mountains, so I think that's my cue to go inside. There are hummingbirds everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see them behind me, but thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to see how the garden fills out this spring. A lot of the trees are starting to wake up. There's gonna be a lot of new plant additions really just taking off like all the tomatoes and peppers and eggplants. So I'm so excited for the harvest to come. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next garden vlog. Bye guys.